Let us begin with some history. Cartesian dualism is the belief that the mind and body are somehow separate entities. The belief was created by a French philosopher born in the late 1500s named René Descartes. He formulated that consciousness and self-awareness came from some sort of non-physical spirit. He believed the body was a machine, however the mind was something more spiritual. Descartes believed that non-human life forms did not have this mind. They were simply the machine part of a life form without the non-physical mind. When a human sustained an injury, the spiritual mind realized the pain and the person suffered. When another life form sustained an injury, they were simply machines who felt no real pain. Even as Descartes cut animals open while they were still alive, a hobby of his that is still practiced today, he rationalized that their struggling and whimpering was simply a machine reaction and the animal was in no real pain. Descartes was eventually criticized and questioned as to how such a mystical and disconnected mind could interact with a physical body in the first place. Many of his followers began to reject his ideas, and Cartesian dualism is now generally unaccepted in the academic world. But could Descartes have been right? Have any other influential individuals come to the same conclusions before him? Let's ask Professor Bernard Rollin, an expert on animal consciousness. To my knowledge, in the history of thought, from ancient times up to the time of Descartes, no one except Descartes denied that animals could think and feel. It was so close to common sense that it just didn't occur to anybody to question it. That does not mean that people drew ethical consequences from it. People acted towards animals in many cases as if they were wheelbarrows more than as if they were people. But Descartes actually had an axe to grind. Of course, being a religious Catholic, he wanted to prove that the mind, i.e. the soul, same thing for him, were unique to humans. He was also the first guy to say that biology should be part of physics that uh, essentially everything's made up of matter except humans who are made up of mind and matter and therefore if you want physics to explain biology in other words anticipating molecular biology you have to say that animals don't have a mind in the sense humans do their behavior is simply the result of mechanical interactions of the matter that makes them up. And, uh, you know, people who were followers of Descartes believed that if you literally cut up animals alive, vivisection, which now means animal research to a lot of people, but in that time it meant cutting up alive, viva, alive, section, cutting. Um, they didn't have any anesthesia, so they used brute restraint and the animals uh, were cut up alive to see how this works and that works the heart is a pump it's mechanical blah 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 we actually have a place we know of a place where the people did biological experiments following Descartes and we have reports of travelers who visited there and saw the animals chained to tables chained to walls uh, with, with rings in the wall since they couldn't move, being cut up. And Descartes' followers told the students, even though it looks like they're feeling pain, they're not. Because if humans can build a cuckoo clock that, or a mechanical person, that you know, the famous clock in Germany of a milkmaid milking the cow, you know, certainly God can build organisms that act like they feel pain but really don't. Interesting, but some in Europe seemed to be falling under the spell of Descartes at the time. If there was no major opposition, then he must have had valid points, right? I mean, David Hume, the philosopher who was the greatest skeptic in human history, he denied mind, body, God, causality, miracles, um, consistency of everything. Um, but he says somewhere, 
that the one thing that only an idiot would deny, meaning Descartes, is that animals have thoughts and feelings. And um, the first ethics for animals in modern time came out of the uh, utilitarian philosophers who based ethics on pleasure and pain, and it was obvious to them that animals felt pleasure and pain. Um, this really became a crisis at the end of the 19th, beginning of the early 20th century, where a lot of philosophers and scientists wanted to demarcate science from everything else, like religion, metaphysics, and so forth. And some of that stuff was getting mixed in with science. For example, there were biologists who said what made matter living was, it sounds better in French, bullshit always sounds better in French, élan vital, life force. And so there were a whole bunch of philosophers in the late 19th century who said, no, we have to stick to what's observable, measurable, quantifiable in science, and developed a position known as logical positivism, which is if you can't experience it, essentially, it isn't real. Since we can't experience animal thought, we can deny its reality. Since we can't prove that killing is wrong by gathering data, we can deny its reality. And those two components of what I call scientific ideology reinforced each other. Science has nothing to do with ethics, so you don't worry about animal pain. And if you want to worry about animal pain, you say it isn't really pain, it's mechanical. So, whether Descartes was an idiot or not, it still looks like some humans went on believing that they were the only creatures capable of thinking and feeling. Where are people today in their thoughts on this topic? I wrote a book, I published a book in 89, proving that animals feel pain. And I remember going, there was an article about it in the local paper, and I went into the Harley shop, and these bikers all said, well, congratulations on a new book. What it's, what's it about? And I said, well, I'm trying to prove to scientists that animals feel pain. And they looked at me like I was out of my mind. You know what I mean? Like, who has to do that? You have to have that ideological conditioning that spurs your skepticism. Otherwise, nothing is more obvious than when a, that animals feel pain. You step on the dog's foot and howls. One time, I called a veterinarian. You know, veterinarians had been very bad on pain control till the federal law of 85 required the control of pain in research. And then they started looking at pain. Before that, I did a literature search for Congress and for analgesia, you know, pain control. There were only analgesia for lab animals. There were no papers in the literature. Analgesia for animals in general, there were two. One which said there ought to be papers. So, you know, even veterinarians who were dealing with animal suffering are, are, weren't paying attention to animal suffering and animal pain. So, like I say, when I looked in 82, there were two papers. I looked a few months ago, there's now 11,664, probably 12,000 by now. And so, what we hoped would happen, federal law, uh, mandating control of pain would make scientists reappropriate common sense. Perhaps history is less important than modern research and experiments. If animals really could think and feel pain, there must be some kind of experiment we can do to prove it. Oh yes, I, I called one of the few veterinarians who said that animals feel pain and tried to address what you should do about it. And he was a guy from, I think, the Bronx or Brooklyn, an Italian guy. And so I called him up and I said, look, I'm working on this issue. And, you know, there's a lot of people in your field who deny that animals feel pain. He says, yeah, I know. I said, so when you encounter these people, what do you do? He was a pretty colorful guy. He says, well, I'll tell you. He says, I encounter one of these guys that denies that animals feel pain. I tell him, here, you got a little experiment you should run. Put them up on your examining table. Oh, yeah, make sure it's like a, a big male intact Doberman. Big one, you know? Put them on your examining table. 
get a vice grip and then adjust the vice grip to fit his nuts and then squeeze it and he'll show you he feels pain he'll rip your goddamn face off which is essentially a common sense response Are dogs' balls the real answer to whether or not other life forms can think and feel? How does one know if a dog is reacting to physical agitation due to conscious pain, or if it is simply a machine programmed to react a certain way and does not really feel anything in the human sense of the word? In my writing I say, look, behavior is similar in animals and people when they're painful. They guard the limb, they vocalize this, that. Uh, the physiological substratum is the same. What happens with the nerves, what happens with the biologically active chemicals. Anesthesia and analgesia work on animals. You can train animals with pain and pleasure, negative and positive reinforcement. So really, all the evidence that militates in favor of your feeling pain, Descartes notwithstanding, uh, militates in favor of the animals feeling pain. That Descartes Cartesian way of looking at animals like they're machines, it is outdated and quite frankly 100% insane. Because if we all understand that animals can use their eyes to see, ears to hear, noses to smell, mouths to eat, Legs to walk, feathers to fly, fins to swim, genitalia to procreate, bowels to defecate. I'm always perplexed that most people don't believe that they can also use their brains to think, feel, be rational, be aware, and be self-aware. Am I supposed to believe that every body part on an animal functions just like it's supposed to, except the brain? So, how can one prove conclusively if other life forms, such as animals, have consciousness? Um, are animals conscious? Well, sure. Now, can you prove conclusively that animals are conscious? No. Can you prove conclusively that I'm conscious? Can I prove conclusively that you're conscious? Well, to use the great philosophical example, can we prove conclusively that the chair exists independently of our perception? When we leave this room, what is the chair like? Well, you want to say it's this and this color, but that depends on it interacting with the rods and cones of the eye, right? Or, as Bertrand Russell once said, how do we know the whole world wasn't created 10 seconds ago and us with all our memories and the fossils and everything, you can't know that. Um, science is not skeptical that we can trust each other's perceptions, though it should be, or at least it could be. Therefore, it shouldn't be skeptical about when animals show all the signs of pain, whether they really feel pain, because that's special pleading for the things that they want to specially plead for and not use the same standards of evidence for animal mind as they use for the existence of an external world.